Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth video in our series on integrating Syncfusion components into an ASP.NET Core MVC project. Here we'll be creating a sidebar using the Syncfusion components like sidebar and menu. Now let's complete this application with a sidebar. Inside the sidebar, we'll be having a vertical menu. So for this sidebar, we have a separate partial view, which you can see along with the layout here, sidebar. And we have rendered this inside the layout with this tag partial. Now first of all, inside this sidebar, I want to show a menu, a vertical menu containing all the links inside the application. For that, there is a Syncfusion component called menu. So here we have the component menu. So here we have the component EJ is menu and we'll be assigning the list of hyperlinks that we want to add into the menu with a list like this. So let's do the same inside our application here. First of all, anything inside this sidebar should be wrapped with this tag content template. And here we have the component for the menu EJ is menu. Here we have the ID. Now with this property items, we have to pass a list of the hyperlinks that I will add inside this view itself. First of all, we have a list of object, meaning a dynamic list. Let it be menu items. And let's initialize the list here. Now we can provide this list into this property items here. Now into this list, we can add menu items for each pages inside the application. So here we go menu items dot add method can be used inside that we'll be creating an anonymous object first of all we have the text property and this property will be displayed inside the menu item so here we have the first menu item for the category now here we have to provide the relative url which is forward slash category now let me copy paste this for transaction so here it is transaction and here we have the corresponding URL. Now let's build this back to the application. So here we have the menu items. We want to make it a vertical menu, not horizontal. For that, we add this property orientation as vertical. That's it, here we have a vertical menu. Now, if you want to have child menu items for these menus, we can add that as a sub item inside the menu item here. For example, let me add some child items into this menu item category. You could see the same example inside this demo here. We are using this property items to add sub menu items. Let me copy this same and I will paste that here. Build the project. See, here we have those sub items. These sub menu items can also have the properties like the parent, for example, URL, text, items, etc. Now, if you want to show these sub items beneath the main parent instead of showing it as a separate pop up, you just need to set this property hamburger mode. See, this time the sub items are shown below the parent. So that's how you can add sub items to a menu item. In this application, we don't need these sub items here, so let me remove that. Now, along with these menu items, we can display a phone over some icon. For that, you can use this property, icon CSS. Here I will pass classes for a phone over some icon. Now let's do the same for this transaction menu item. Now here we have the icons. Now let me add a dashboard item, which I want to show about this category. For that, you can add the menu item before this category here. So the menu items will be shown in the order that we have added here. So this is for dashboard. Here we have the relative URL and let's provide the phone over some icon. Build this back to the app, that's it. Now you can check these menu items here. Now let me add few more dummy menu items. For that, I will duplicate this. This is for reports, then settings, okay, you see here we have the dummy menu items. Now if you want to group these menu items into different groups, you can use separator. Let me show you that here. So these first three menu items will be under a group. For that, let me copy this and paste it above. This text will be shown as the name of the group, let it be general. And then we just need to set this property separator. And rest of the dummy menu items will be under a different group called extras. 
build the project back to the view. See here we have the category separator. Now let's customize this menu inside the style sheet. So here we have the session for the menu. For customizing the component, I will be using this ID property here, menu. Now let me paste the corresponding CSS styles here. So these much styles are applied to the component menu. And these classes are the default classes applied to the Syncfusion component elements. Okay, back to the app. That's it. We have to change the background color of the menu, which we have given as an inherited color from the sidebar. So it should be taken from the sidebar. For sidebar, we have already applied the background color here, this one. So in order to work this, we have to add one more style. We just need to change the background color of wrapper of the menu component, which is the inside the sidebar with this class eMenu wrapper. I will set the width as 100% and we will set the background color as inherit. So this will inherit the background color from this sidebar and the menu will inherit the color from this wrapper. Let's save this. That's it. This is a default HTML component used to wrap the Syncfusion component menu. Now just about this component, let me show you the logged in user details. So back to the partial view, sidebar, just about this menu, let me add a div. And here we are applying a custom clause called profile wrapper. Now first of all, let's show the logged in user profile picture. The same is added inside the now bar here. So let's copy that from the now bar itself, layout view. And here we have the element. And just beneath that we have the user details. Let's apply the flex classes. Padding from start of the range three. And here we have the H6 element. And let's ignore the default margin. Inside this element, we will be showing the name of this application. Let it be valid app. And just beneath that, we'll be showing name of this logged in user. So here we have the bootstrap class text muted. For now, I will provide a dummy name Ashton Cox. Now to the parent div here, let me add one more custom class titles. So we have to add the styles for these custom classes inside the style sheet. So here we have the session for the profile pic. And let me paste the corresponding styles here. This is for the wrapper and this is for the titles. Let me build this project back to the view. That's it. Now just about this profile details, I want to show the app logo, which is exactly looks like this fab icon for the app here, which I have already created. You could see that in my desktop here, logo. So let me copy this. And let's paste that into the directory www root. Now back to the partial view sidebar. For the logo, here we have the parent div logo wrapper. Inside that we have another div with the class app logo. Inside that we can show the app logo. Let's pass the relative path here, logo.png. Now let's add the corresponding styles here. So let me add a new session here for the logo. This is for the wrapper and here we have the app logo. Let's build this back to the app. That's it. So here we have the app logo. Now everything inside the sidebar is added. Now we just need to make this sidebar collapsible and expandable. For that we just need to enable docking inside the component sidebar. Just set this property enable dock. Now to expand and collapse this sidebar, we need an icon. For that, I will be adding a phone over some icon. So I have selected this phone over some icon. Let me copy the tag and pasting here. And later inside the JavaScript code, we need to work with this icon. So I will be providing an ID here, sidebar toggler. So here we have the icon that we have just added. Now to float this icon to the right side here, I'm gonna add another div. And here I will apply this bootstrap class with 100. So the in-between space will be occupied by this div. Now let's style this icon. We can use the ID sidebar toggler. Now we have to add a click event for this toggler so that when we click on it, the sidebar will be collapsed. For that, inside the sidebar, we can have some JavaScript codes. 
First of all, let's subscribe to the DOM loaded event. And here we have the function which is to be executed when the content is completely loaded. Inside that, first of all, I'll be creating a variable called dog bar. Into that, let's assign the DOM element here, sidebar. So here we go. Document dot get element by ID, which is the JavaScript default function. And here we just need to pass the ID, which is sidebar. So this will give you the HTML element. From that, you can call the default properties and methods of the HTML element. In order to work with the Syncfusion functions of the component sidebar here, we have to retrieve the Syncfusion instance, which is by calling this function ej2 underscore instances. And let's retrieve the first element. Now let's add the click event for the toggler. So document dot get element by ID and let's retrieve the toggler. So here we have selected the toggler, add the on click event. Now from this instance, we just need to call this method toggle. So this method will switch the current state from open to close and close to open. So that's all about the event. So here we have a typo, this is ej2, not ejs. Let's build this and back to the app. Since we have enabled docking, this now bar is taking over the space of the toggler. Previously, we have applied a left margin for the content with the same width as that of this sidebar here. Now let's add the same margin for this now bar also. So here we have the styles, now bar. Now here we go, nav dot now bar. And here we have the left margin. 290 pixel back to the app. So here we have the toggler. See the toggler is working. Now we have to reduce the width when the sidebar is in close state. For that we can assign this property dog size. Let it be 100. Let's build this. See this time we have a reduced width. During the close state we have to hide few things for the better appearance of the sidebar here. For that, if you inspect the sidebar, you could see the classes applied into the component. Here we have the sidebar and here we have the classes indicating whether the sidebar is closed or not. If it is closed, you could see this class E hyphen close. Now, if you expand it, it will be applied with this class E open. So based on the presence of the classes E open or E close, we can show and hide the elements within the sidebar here. So that's what we are going to do inside the style sheet side.css. So here we have the session for the sidebar and here we go. So here we have changed the padding when it is in closed state. Hidden app logo when it is closed will hide the menu item text here. And also the titles inside the profile details will be hidden. So that's what we are going to do with the presence and absence of these classes e open and e close. You can check that further. Let me save this back to the app. Let's try that again. See? Now we want to change this icon based on the state of the sidebar. When it is in closed state, we have to use the opposite icon to this icon here. For that, inside the sidebar, I will be only applying the base class. So this is the toggler. And I will only apply this basic class for solid. And the icon content will be applied from this side or CSS based on the absence and presence of the class e close and e open. So here it is. Here I have used the content uh, which you can see along with the i tag here. Here we have the i tag and you can see the corresponding unicode and that's what we have applied with the content. So this is for the left ankle and here we have the right ankle let's check whether it is working or not let's toggle it boom it's working now finally i want to show you a bonus tip which is docking to a target let me show you that inside the demo itself so here we have the demo that i have bookmarked let's check the sidebar so here we have the default sidebar and let's check this docked sidebar now if you toggle the state you see this content is taking the space where the sidebar is shrinked. Now let's do the same for this sidebar also. For that, first of all, let's wrap the navbar with a div having the class dog target. So here we are wrapping this navbar with this class dog target. Now let's provide the same class inside the sidebar property target dot the target class. 
Let's build this. The height of this sidebar is reduced. We can fix that in a bit. Now you could check the docking. Now let's remove the scroll bar from this sidebar. Back to the style sheet. Here we have the sidebar. Set overflow as hidden. Now to remove this whole body sidebar here, we can hide the overflow of the body. Now we are not able to scroll inside the dashboard. In order to fix that, we'll be adding the scroll bar to the main content div here, this one. So back to the style sheet, overflow on Y direction or Y axis direction, make it auto. Now in order to work this, we have to assign some height. Let it be 100 VH. So here we have the scroll bar for the main content. Still it is not viewing the entire height. So I will reduce the height here to something 92. Now it's working properly fine. And now the dog sidebar will be having the same height that of the target div here, which is the now bar. So both of these are having the same height. In order to have the full height here, the targeted div must be including this content also. So I will change the uh, targeted div so that it will wrap including this uh, main content div here. Let's build the project back to the view. That's it. See, it is working properly fine. Now, you might be having this question why this enter div, which is this target div here, dog target is wrapping the enter nav and this main content here. Why not the main content is expanding and collapsing while we close and open this sidebar here. And that behavior will be only applicable to the first element inside the dog target here, which is this now bar. Now, if you want to verify that, you can do this. Let's add a div prior to this now bar here. And inside that we have some text. Let's build this back to the app. So this time this is the first element. This time only the first div is expanding and shrinking. So that's all about the dog sidebar. Now finally, I want to disable this feature here. If you swipe to the left, the sidebar is getting closed. So in order to disable this feature, I will reset this property of the sidebar, enable gestures. So that's all guys, here we have created the MVC expense tracker application with the help of Syncfusion component library. A continuation of this video series explaining other Syncfusion components along with MVC project is to be expected. Let me know if you have any video suggestion regarding this topic in the comment box below. For more awesome videos like this, please consider subscribing to this channel called Affection if you haven't yet. If you found this video helpful, please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues.